This is a University of Otago podcast. I've got eight or ten websites to show you, no other references aside from the URLs on those pages. Creative Commons refers to an organization that was established in 2001 in San Francisco, a nonprofit organization. It involved people like Lawrence Lessig and other intellectual property lawyers and people with expertise in the internet and technology in general. But generally speaking, it's more about a change in attitude and philosophy than it is about licenses and legal documents. It's about the idea that the work that we do has value beyond the limited use we normally put it to, and that, that our enemy is not piracy, but obscurity. And that if our work is useful, if we're proud of what we've done, we want it to get out there. It's our business card, it's linked to who we are, it's a reputation, and it's useful to get it beyond, say, our class or our library. This photo of the gannet, or the wings at least, were taken from a photograph that was placed on Flickr, uh, licensed with a Creative Commons license that allowed me to not only use it, but manipulate it, change it, and do what I want, as long as I gave attribution to the person who created it, Matt Bin, at the bottom. A few useful websites to look at relating to Creative Commons. This is the American-based site, the one that's responsible for the origin of the effort. Uh, again, established in 2001, the first suite of licenses produced and published in 2002. This gives you access to current information about Creative Commons, issues, campaigns, things that relate to what's happening overall. You'll note in the center the various flags. Other countries, after the initial set of licenses were published in America in 2002, other countries developed their own licenses so that Creative Commons could be used in, say, New Zealand. Licenses that were slightly different from the American licenses, but congruent with national law. This is the New Zealand site, creativecommons.org.nz. So just the NZ at the end takes you to the New Zealand specific site. This gives us information about Creative Commons in general, links to other useful information and news, and provides us crucially with the licenses themselves and the way in which you append those licenses to your work. There are six main licenses I'll show you here. You'll see these symbols, and you've seen a few of these already in the previous discussions. Basically, Creative Commons, as Richard mentioned, is an alternative to the all rights reserved approach that we have to ownership and protection of the work that we do. The idea with Creative Commons is that you decide the degree to which you want to control the work and its ownership, and the degree to which, more importantly, you want others to use your work and get it out there. Now this approach is happening at a time when more of the work that we do is done in digital form, and the digital nature of these documents were produced changes dramatically the economy underlying the production and consumption of work. It costs us nothing to make something available online for others to access. The cost of access, even printing, is borne by the person who takes our work, not by us. So it, there's no cost to us in having our work travel and, as a result, increase our own reputation and the reputation of our institution and the visibility of the work that we do and the work that our colleagues do here at the university or in the library or in other parts of the institution here. Attribution only is the least restrictive license. What that says is that you can take my work and you can do whatever you like with it, including making money by putting in a book that you sell, for example. The only thing I ask is that you provide my name. You tell people where you got this work, who produced this piece. So that photo of a gannet, I just had to give the name of Matt, the creator, but I could do what I wanted. And I could even sell my revised version of his work. Attribution, non-commercial, and you can see how these add up as they become slightly more restrictive, and how the icons add up. I can remix, tweak, build upon the work, but without any commercial reuse. I can't sell that work and make money from it, but I can do what I like with it. Attribution, non-commercial, no derivative works. And again, they all have their short by NCND, which you might see when you look at these licenses on work. I can use the work, but I have to provide attribution to the person who created it. I can't sell it. And if I release this work, I have to share it with others in the same way 
that they've shared it with me. Following on, attribution, non-commercial, share alike. Attribution, no derivative works. I can't alter it, but I can use it and sell it. Attribution, share alike, uh, again, meaning that I can use the work, change it, but the work that I create has to be released under the same license that the work has that I've used. That's the share alike provision, which has the effect of encouraging others to practice the same philosophy of making work available in a way that can be used by others. So this is the website, this New Zealand website that you would go to or advise others to go to if they wanted to apply a Creative Commons license to a work. It provides in the pop-up examples and the other links with the actual text that you would append to a printed piece or a physical object. If you wanted to release a physical object with a Creative Commons license, there's a little bit of text which describes this particular license you've chosen and provides a link to a website that somebody could go to get the more detailed information. Each of these licenses exist in three forms. Uh, one is a legal form that lawyers and legal entities would be familiar with and use in a court of law. Another is the street version, the version that you and I would understand. And another is the machine readable, something that the computer understands and links to. So there are degrees or th versions of these uh, licenses so that they can be used and understood by the people who use them and also used and understood by lawyers in a court of law. So that's the site you would go to to find out what license was appropriate for what you wanted to do and to actually get the text you need or the link if it's going to be on a, a digital artifact to the actual license. So by providing the link to the license someone knows yes it's this license it's attribution only for example and here's the link if I want to know more about what that means. So if you go to Flickr, for example, or other sites where people have put their work and uh, appended uh, uh, a Creative Commons license, there'll be a link to what that license is. The link actually takes you to the license online. I want to point out that other institutions have picked up on this and are using it to their advantage. A good example is the Otago Polytechnic just next door that has adopted the Creative Commons attribution only license as a default license that they ask that all their staff use on their work. And it's a crucial change for them and it I think offers a challenge for us in terms of what uh, our institution does in response to Creative Commons and what uh, we could make with it and do with it. How do you find work that has a Creative Commons license attached to it? In the American based site creativecommons.org there is a spot where you can search for work that it resides in these various hosting services. You can use a Google search, Yahoo, Flickr for photos, Blip TV for videos, others that you see there. Wikimedia Commons is a hosting site for work that's available for others to use. So you can use that site to do a search using any one of these repositories. You can also go to sites like Google and uh, fairly recently, Google has added a capability on their advanced, advanced image search engine where you can search for particular licenses, Creative Commons licenses. So I can search for something that has no license attached to it, therefore it's copyright by default, or it's labeled for reuse, for commercial reuse, or reuse with modification, or commercial reuse with modification, which is the attribution only license. So they're just using simple language to indicate the more liberal licenses, open licenses, as you get down the bottom there. Any lecturer or student could, from the very beginning of the creation of a document, which could be a lecture, a thesis, a book, use work, search for work that has a Creative Commons license attached to it that allows them to use this work, perhaps alter this work, even make money from this work, without later having to go back and get permission if they decide that that work, say a lecture or a thesis, is going to be published. So I'm a, uh, I teach in the Design Studies Department, and as a lecturer I put together lectures all the time, some of which I put online, some of which I don't. But as a practice now, all the work I use is Creative Commons licensed work, because it's, there's enough of it out there, there's no excuse for not using work that people have invited me to take and use. So that's work that I'm doing for my students, and I may just show it in a lecture, but if I decide to put that on a public blog or give it to somebody on a CD or whatever, I don't have to then go back and get permissions 
Permission has been granted in advance by the creators for all the work I've used. And I can apply that license to my own project, whether it be a lecture, a video, or anything else. So there's no excuse for not using Creative Commons licenses and therefore encouraging others to use your work in the way that you've outlined it can be used and to get it out there. If we're proud of what we're doing, why do we want to maintain this perimeter within which our work circulates if we can publish our work to the world as we're doing it? That doesn't include just work that we're finished with and we're ready to publish as a book, but work that we're doing as we engage in the process of research and study. Yahoo has their provision for finding Creative Commons work. I got an email just the other day, two days ago. Uh, Vimeo, another video hosting service, has added a Creative Commons uh, search facility and application facility for people who upload their work to Vimeo, one of the many sites for putting your videos. Wikimedia Commons, one of the many repositories where work is stored. You can search for Creative Commons licenses there as well. And that's the end of my presentation. But again, it's less about the licenses and more about a change in attitude and philosophy that recognizes that we're proud of the work that we do and we're happy for others to make use of that work because it can only come back and shed light on us and our institution. Thank you.